In today's news, we are live with local author Ms. Gabrielle Skelton Bardo on her new book, as well as the Commission of Inquiry team is heading back to the UK in two days and we'll be back in the BVI, but not until Easter. The BVI CCHA expresses their disapproval with the increase of port fees as well as Dustin Diamond. The celebrity from Saved by the Bell dies. All this and so much more when 2A4 News returns. What's up? Well, you look like you're about to pass out. I think I am. But anyhow. Chuck, what are you doing? Remember last year when I spoke to you over the phone? When I said, oh, well. Anyhow, ever since that moment, I was wanting to take this step further with you. <laughs> oh, gee, that's it. I want to know if you Via would officially have me as your sales rep with a friend. What? To get live with our February promotions. Huh? Get live, get love, and get gifted. Bring a friend to CCT to sign up for a freedom plan. Take a picture with them in the store and post to social media with the hashtag GetLiveCCT. Then put your receipt with your number in the golden basket and wait on a call from Jante. First place gets $500 each. Second place matching Samsung Galaxy A30s. And third place $150 shopping vouchers each to one mark. So what you really say? Really? And I could bring a friend too? What a merrier. Hello viewers and welcome to 284 News. It is another terrific Tuesday here in the beautiful British Virgin Islands and we are so thrilled to be coming with you, coming, joining you, sorry, with another edition of 284 News. My name is Javon Wilson. And I am Kyla Kinisha Forbes. Now we are coming to you with your local, regional and international content viewers. All right, beginning with a live interview that I'm so excited to get into today. Uh, it is with local author Ms. Gabrielle Skelton Bardo with book two, actually part two of the Illustrated History of the Virgin Islands book, but with a twist, viewers. Trust me when I tell you, you do not want to miss this interview. Uh, speaking to all, tales, all things culture, community, as well as black history as well. Uh, definitely excited to get into that. Uh, but as we look across to the Commission of Inquiry, uh, shocking new detail, we are now realizing that the Commission of Inquiry team will not solely be based on the ground here in the BVI. Uh, matter of fact, they will be in between the BVI mm. and the UK throughout this six-month uh, Commission of Inquiry process. And in the region, we see in Jamaica, Kyle, of very tragic news, a Jamaican woman being gunned down in the midst of a church service. Uh, it is being alleged that family members may have sent uh, the perpetrator to her because of alleged wealth. So we're getting into those stories later on. Of course, as well as we see where the Speaker of the House is welcoming Governor Rankins. And he has much to say about that. But also what I would say is very an, a very important story for today. We see where the BVI CCHA has expressed publicly their disapproval with the increase in port fees. We spoke about that last week, those increase in fees. So viewers, you definitely will be getting into that. Our viewers, as we begin today, the Commission of Inquiry team will not be solely stationed in the British Virgin Islands for the six-month process that will allow for the investigation of malfeasance in government and public service over recent years. Now, the team will depart the territory on February 4th and intends to return by Easter, providing that there are no COVID-induced travel restrictions. Viewers, this was confirmed by Mr. Steve Chandler. He is the secretary to the Commission of Inquiry, who said, and I quote, It has always been the inquiry's team intention to split its time between the BVI and London to achieve this. The commissioner and the secretary to the commission will return to the UK on Thursday, the 4th of February, to consult with the soon-to-be-appointed council to the commission to consider our detailed procedures and the initial wave of information the commission has received and continues to receive. Mr. Chandler added, and I quote, 
It is hoped that the inquiry team will return before Easter. Uh, COVID travel restrictions permitting uh, proposed oral hearings will take place in the BVI after Easter, he said, and then concluded that the timings are, of course, dependent on COVID travel restrictions. Of course, of course, ensuring that those are in place at the time. Now, Commissioner Gary Hickenbottom began public consultations just yesterday, viewers. Uh, he was able to uh, partake in his scheduled visits to the sister islands. Uh, he visited Virgin Gotha and Yas Van Dyke as well, uh, where he was able to speak with a few persons on a, in a very private setting. He was also scheduled to visit Anigada, however, uh, due to uh, unfavorable sea conditions that was postponed. He is now hoping to arrange for that to be done this Wednesday, that is Wednesday, February 3rd. Now, viewers, the purpose of the Commission of Inquiry is to establish whether there is any evidence of corruption, abuse of office, or any serious uh, dishonesty that has taken place in public office in recent years? And if so, what conditions would have allowed this to happen? The commissioner will provide a report of his findings and his recommendations for the next steps to the governor within approximately six months for the governor's consideration. Kyla, as we dig deeper into the commission of inquiry, many questions are being asked. Um, but ever since this particular report hit the media, uh, some persons are duly concerned that it will affect the process. Okay. There is already a, a hesitation as it relates to persons coming forward with any relevant information that may be pertinent to this inquiry. Um, and I don't think that the uh, intermittent intermittent visits, sorry, between the BVI and the London will make this process any easier. However, we do see uh, the Commission of Inquiry's team very consistent with their process. I think we're learning more and more about this Commission of Inquiry as we go. Um, here we see the Secretary, Steve Chandler, saying that this was always um, the plan mm -hmm. of the Commission, but this is very new to the people of the Virgin Islands. And as you said, um, of course, confidentiality has been a big part of person's worries about the commission of inquiry. So not being on the ground, I'm not sure. And they haven't been here quite a that long, long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're heading back on Thursday. But we do hope that this does not hinder the process and that it is still a fair and transparent process for the commission of inquiry, but also for the British Virgin Islands. Absolutely. Now, as we move on, as we said earlier, we reported last week that the BVI Ports Authority indicated that they have increased their fees for the services the authority offers. Now, the BVI Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association, which is BVI CCHA, speaks to the reaction of the business community right here in the BVI. The BVI CCHA, in a press release, informed that immediately after the announcement by the BVI Ports Authority, businesses began to contact the BVI CCHA to complain about the price increase. The BVI CCHA revealed that they reached out to the authority's public relations office to inquire about fee increases and if any were coming in 2020. They said the reply received said, and I quote, the BVI Ports Authority has not implemented any increase in fees for 2020, which in the BVI CCHA um, opinion, which did not answer the question posed directly. Now, BVI CCHA expressed their disapproval with the sudden change in prices and the way in which it was rolled out. They said, and I quote, the, this month, we now learn that increases were put in place in December 2020 and announced in January of 2021 with no notice, no consultation, or even a grace period. This is unacceptable, they said. The cost of doing business is already too high. These increases will have to be passed on to consumers who are already struggling to make ends meet in some cases. For the most part, businesses are already doing their part. Businesses pay their fair share of mandated fees and taxes. And yes, cost increases, infl inflation happens. But when you see a fee increase of 500 percent 
That's from five hundred、wow. to twenty-five thousand. That's just borderline madness. Considering the only information to explain the increases is what's heard in the rumor mills, this is what. Um, CCHA had to say, which the BVI CCHA has not been able to validate. Something more than a press release should have been sent before the fees were increased. Now, the cost increases are one thing. Rate spikes, for whatever reason, without consultation, are pure and simple, and an example of. Poor governance. Now, these are the words from the press release from the BVI CCHA. They gave their suggestion on the matter, and they said, and I quote: "In the meantime, the implementation of the fees increased by the BVI Ports Authority needs to be put on hold, and consultation with stakeholders should be provided." So, these are the clear words from. The BVI CCHA, which is the group responsible for basically the business community in the BVI, and they have outright said that they are in absolute disapproval with this increase, and they are echoing、uh, the sentiments of the business community. Kyla,、uh, just two days ago, members of the business community, as in premier business、uh, persons. Reached out to us here at Wait for Media to investigate the situation because, Kyla, the reality is this increase will not escape the consumers. Of course,、um, like BVI CCHA said, the least that should have been done is some form of public consultation or the least edu- education on what's happening.、Um, but I think to pounce this on the business community, which will then filter down to the consumers, who, by the way, are still struggling. Some、of、people、course. are still without jobs. Some people are still. Living on reduced salaries, how are we as a territory within the, this economy that is struggling as a result of COVID nineteen? How are we to cope with those increases? As we can reflect, up to five hundred percent in some cases. Then some persons might say, "Okay, we had a stimulus. Maybe that stimulated the economy for a little bit." But Kyla, we do know as well that even business owners and some individuals are still awaiting、of、their、course. their stimulus checks. So it's a really daunting situation, I believe,、um, and we are going to continue. To look at this because、um, it is a tough time. It is a tough time for the territory as we pivot our way through this pandemic, and I think、um, increasing fees by so at, at least so significantly、um, is a challenge. And you know, we're not knocking the fact that government. Um, has to find new ways to to increase revenue, but I'm not. I'm, I don't necessarily think 500 percent increases without at least、um, alerting the public is necessarily the way for us to go. Understood. Now, viewers, still ahead, we are live up next with local author Gabrielle on her new book. All this and so much more when 284 News returns. It's 2021, and guess what? We are kicking taboo to the curb. Let's face it, the world lacks conversation. So we are bringing you homemade cocktails, thought-provoking topics, and nuggets to rock your world. A show that promises to keep it fun, frank, and fresh. So come on this journey with me. This is keeping it candid. Conversations for the modern world. Viewers, welcome back to Two Eight Four News. Now, today I am so honored to be sitting down with another BVI creative, a local author who has been rocking the airways with her book one. Now she is here to talk about book two of the illustrated history of the Virgin Islands. Of course, Eastern Turtle. Gabrielle, welcome back to Two Eight Four Media. Thank you for inviting me. 
All right, so Gabrielle, book one was a complete hit. Um, I, I do remember my colleague, Ron Grant, of course, uh, grabbing a copy for my little sister. And I have to say, it really spoke to the culture and the identity of the Virgin Islands. But before we delve into the new copy, let's talk about a little bit about what inspired you to get into uh, illustrating. The whole concept is history, and I love the history of my island. And it's a beautiful history mm -hmm. from the beginning. And just to see that due to Hurricane Omas and Maria, a lot of our history got destroyed. A lot of the buildings were destroyed because of those massive hurricanes. And I decided um, I wanted to find a way that I could preserve history as much as possible and that the history can be more accessible to children. Because our history is it's dense, it's, it's, it's very intense, it's more adult driven. Yes. And one of the things is that I would like to take that information and make it more accessible to children, especially with their school projects and especially um, getting boys, you always had a statement, boys don't like to read and what's not. And those are one of my biggest concerns is that um, let's, let me develop something that can help both adults retain some information without, without having to be overwhelmed by yes. the amount of information mm -hmm. that is there. And also something that kids from ages five up until teenage and age, which is, um, let's say, 17, would be able to have that information accessible and readyable in their hands. So I, de I decided the most fun way I could do that is in an illustrative form. I so love it. That's how the coloring book part was mm -hmm. formed, so mm -hmm. that it could at least attract a child within the five-year five year age range and still attract a child in the 17-year-old range. History. And, I yes. love it. Yeah. And then still you could deal with the adults because we made sure that the illustrations were detailed enough that adults would find time and, and a relaxing time just wanting to color the illustrations. And one of the most pivotal things about the history is that we always look at history external, yes, but internal it's happening for us because there's an image in the book that is called the 19, 1912 market. Okay. And at that time, April 15th, 1912, the Titanic sank. But wow. the image in my book shows what we were doing in 1912. Right. So, this, so while in the world, in world history, these things are happening, we were still doing all little thing and that was farming and we were selling we were in the market selling and there's a uh, in the image there's a young boy in the dress that they wore back in in the 1912 Excellent. so so the fashion that transcended worldwide came here to the bvi as well so those 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 little details is what was is found in our history Excellent. And I know so much was condensed into the first book, which, of course, inspired you to get into book two. And I'm sure compartmentalizing for many more books to come. So let's talk about book two. Um, and of course, viewers, I am so excited to get into these dolls because with book two came the launch of Gabrielle's Territorial Dolls. So just walk us through the history of book two very quickly, and then we'll just give our viewers some insight into what these represent. Okay. Well, in book one, there's an image on the front, a character, and that's my Zoe the Turtle Dove character. Okay. So with book two, I decided to give um, Zoe colors. I decided to say, okay, um, she's going to evolve, and now let me present Zoe in how I imagine the Turtle Dove the turtle dove costume would look like. So in book two, her image is actually sported, sported on the front. And I tried as much as possible when creating the dog that the dog will reflect that image as much as possible. All right. Um, and of course, the turtle dove is reminiscent of the BVI culture as well. When you speak about Zoe, just tell our viewers, you're speaking about the beautiful and very talented Miss Zoe uh, Mac, uh, Walcott, correct? Yes. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to this one, which is very beautiful as well. Tell us about the white doll. Okay, the white doll is named after our cultural icon, Eileen Parsons, and she was very honored to lend her name to this doll, which is wearing a national dress. And I was able to work with Kristen Fraser in getting all of the dolls ready for my event that happened on the 31st of January. Okay. And she was instrumental in helping me get that vision 
to reality. Excellent. So, then we move on to a very, um, I think, a very important uh, patriotic, uh, somebody who would, I, I would consider a cultural icon in the BVI, the late, great Dolores Christopher. Uh, we do know how passionate she was about BVI culture. And you said this doll is actually in her honor. Yeah. Y yes, it is. And again, this was um, from the input of Kristen Fraser. And she made sure that naming a doll and getting the family's approval for the doll was all done and which is which was tremendous a, tre a tremendous achievement for us for what the Lewis Christopher have done for the BVA so it was a, indeed a great honor to be able to do this doll and be able to honor her for all what she has done for the territory Excellent. And we cannot talk about BVI culture without a good old BVI pageant queen. So this, of course, um, is in honor of the very first queen. Tell us about this one. Okay. It, it, it entails exactly what I'm trying to do with book two. In book two, I'm linking culture, how our culture originated with the history and first of all started with the church. So you always hear, hear about Anglican and Methodist Church and how they com the committees came together and started festival. And the first festival queen is actually Miss Ivy Shinnery mm -hmm. from Joss Van Dyke. Yes. So we decided to say in honor of the fact that we started festival and have this festival queen, we will just name this doll Ivy. And uh, so we spoke with her daughter and her daughter was happy to say, yes, my mom is so happy to know that she's being honored this way. Excellent. So that was how we were able to born these names and to um, at least lend iconic territorial persons to these territorial dolls. What I love about this project, Gabrielle, is the fact that there's so much collaboration with local talent. You spoke about Kristen Fraser, of course, renowned designer who's represented the BVI's name so well, even on the international scene, uh, but also some tailors as well who played a critical role in bringing this project to life. Why do you think it's so important for persons locally to continue to collaborate, especially when it's speaking to uh, cultural identity? Wow. Uh, I had about, my team was about four persons, um, not just Kristen, but also Dwayne, McTav um, Dwayne McTavius from, for DM Creative. He was able to illustrate these dolls as well. I don't have the display here of what the illustrations are, mm -hmm. but he did a wonderful job in doing the illustrations for the dolls and how the dolls would, would look like when we started to design, this, um, design them. And then we did have a local and also a former Miss BVI, Carmen Nibs, she designed the national doll. Okay. Uh, yes, and she was able to She's in, based in New York, and she was able to have, you know, conference calls with Kristen and myself and be able to get this vision out there. And then we were able to um, work with a professional seamstress, uh, Miss Rosanna Castillo um, Johnson. She's here in the BVI, okay. and she, did, she was able to do the um, immaculate, immaculate sewing mm. of the designs that we created. And that team, to have that team working so together closely just to bring my vision together, it was a supportive group, and we had fun. And Trust certainly. me, just, yes, just collaborating. Yes. It was just like, it was just awesome to see the, the young um, and the medium young, mm -hmm. which is me, <laughs> to be able to work together and get this product out. They actually believed in my vision, and they just wanted to see it bear fruit, and I think it has. You know, one of the things that really stands out about your work, Gabriel, is the fact that, like you said, you are meeting two worlds, the young to the not so young. Um, and we have adults like myself who are still into dolls. Um, so I really do think this is a great piece to add to any collection, not just for our young girls and our kids, but also for adults. How can persons get in contact with you if they wanted to pre-order one of these beautiful dolls from the collection? They could actually contact Miss Kristen Fraser at Clovers. Okay. And they could actually contact me as well. Um, my WhatsApp number is 284-544-2280. Okay. And we, they could decide to, if they're going to pre-order and which doll they're going to pre-order. We're selling it as a collector's item at this time. You can buy them individually or a set all four. So that Excellent. would be... 
Excellent, Gabrielle, congratulations. I think this is immaculate in every way. And again, really speaking to local talent and creativity, this is excellent. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Our viewers, before we go quickly, we have Miss Zoe, which is the turtle dove. Um, we also have Dolores. And we have, this is Miss Ivy Chinnery, correct? Mm -hmm. The first Miss BVI queen. And then finally, Miss Eileen Parsons. Viewers, this was so excellent. We continue to cover local talent and power here at 284 Media, something that we truly enjoy doing. Kyla? No, I am <laughs> definitely taking away uh, just the passion in which Miss Bardot mm -hmm. spoke about this project. Mm -hmm. And I love this project because, as she said very eloquently, mm -hmm. that our history, it's written down in textbooks, but it's not simplified enough for yes. our young yes. persons. And I think it gives a sense of national pride from a very young yes, age. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I just want to applaud this um, this initiative. It really is really dear to my heart. Um, I would like to publicly say that I want to pre-order one of the Dolores okay. dolls. Yes. Um, Isn't Dolores was gorgeous? actually my cousin, my we first could actually cousin. Actually, wear this to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, <laughs> that's sharp. But that was my, that's my first cousin, and just knowing that her legacy. Yes. is now living on in so many mm -hmm. different ways. Mm -hmm. It's just so heartfelt. So we're definitely so excited to see what else comes out of this series. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it just gets better and better as it goes along. Absolutely. And she did promise behind the scenes that there is more to come. So viewers, of course, be sure to follow Ms. Gabrielle Bardo on Facebook, uh, wherever she is on Instagram. Um, just follow her because there's lots more to come from this wonderful, wonderful woman. Viewers, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll be wrapping up 284 News. So stick with us. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, as we look across the region, we are practically out of time, but we want to encourage you to head over to our website to check out uh, this story. A Jamaican woman, actually, Kyla, was shot dead on Sunday, um, while in church, it is so unfortunate, uh, gunmen walked into the church while uh, the service was happening and fired shots directly at her. She died on the way to the hospital. It is wow. now being alleged that the family of her husband, uh, those persons are now being held and, and they have been arrested as suspects in the murder. But Kyla, it is so tragic. Uh, there is a video circulating on social media, which viewers you will be able to look at via our website. And it shows, it captures the church service, of course, but it shows exactly when this ordeal happened. And yeah. it really brings chills to your skin to see that even within church service, persons are not deterred by that in not a way. And it goes to show in this day and age how greed could really influence persons to take what is not uh, theirs. It's unfortunate as well that she lost her husband just a few months ago. And just a few days prior to being shot, she was in church praying for her young one and only son, by the way. Now, as a result of that, we're not sure what's going to happen with the wealth. But thankfully, law enforcement acted quickly and those suspects are now in custody. Wow. But also, just quickly, as we know, Saved by the Bell star, as we know him as Screech. But um, Dustin Diamond actually lost his battle to cancer and died at age 44. For, but Sad. you can also check that out on our website viewers but we are so sorry that we are now out <laughs> of time so that is it for today's news roundup i am kyla kenisha forbes and my name is javon wilson thanking you so much for joining us take care bye